Hi, it's been a little while since we've had a video like this on the Nintendo UK YouTube channel, but you know, it's a game we're excited about, so <laughs> yeah. it's about time we did a little Nintendo UK play. Uh, in case you haven't seen me before, my name is James Bowden, I'm Community Manager here at Nintendo UK, and I'm joined by this lovely chat. My name is Bowie A. Bowie e. Alexander, I'm also known as Bowie the Hero, uh, I'm a JRPG enthusiast, a streamer, and speedrunner. And, uh, Big fan of this game. Yeah, and so we are here today to take a quick look at a small slither of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Yeah. Um, emphasis on that. But we are going to try and pack as much as we can in. Yeah. So there are certain things that certain things about a Xenoblade Chronicles game that you want to see. You want to yeah. see big rolling landscapes. You want to see big old beasties that you want to encounter. Mm, for sure. Yeah. Um, Obviously, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, um, it is obviously a part of the, the Xenoblade Chronicles series, as you would expect, yeah. but of course, borrowing heavily from you know the previous Xenoblade Chronicles games, specifically Xenoblade Chronicles 1, the original mm -hmm. on N Nintendo Wii, uh, where it really has that focus on the narrative side of things, and that it's very character-driven, story-based uh, focused game, yeah. whilst also bringing back and expanding upon all of those wonderful um, battle systems and different like different gameplay elements that really make the Xenoblade Chronicles games unique. Yeah. So it's like, whilst it's not a direct sequel to Xenoblade Chronicles, it's got a lot of those elements. And, and the story, as you say, it's a focus. It can't be understated that the story here is such a massive focus. Yeah, and, it, and it's um, really good. Um, but yeah, yeah, so let's, let's jump in now before Territorial Roth. I should probably um, put this down as well, because uh, it's quite large. Um, we did have thanks very much to... If you just fallen off, he was coming after you, wasn't he? He was Territorial Rothbart. Yeah. Was Ter there. Territorial Rothbart is a uh, one of our monsters who is very, very powerful and very, very strong. Um, thanks very quickly, quickly to oh, Little Gem oh, Cosplay for putting together, uh, as you can see in my hand here, um, Pyra's um, Aegis, um, which is obviously the physical man manifestation of, of her weapon that she gives to her driver. And Rex is holding on there. And if I can find it, it does even... Like that. Pretty cool. Nice. So we should probably put that back here. Oh, and let's get underway and have a little look at Ulrith, shall we? Yes. There we go. So this is our one of our first uh, kind of earlier areas in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which is Gormot, um, a kind of a a reflection, let's say, of um, perhaps Gower Plains. <laughs> Maybe it's something very similar yeah, to Gower Plains for sure. Yeah. yeah. It, I mean, you, you can tell you know, that sprawling land, um, you know, it's very, very green. Like, you know, there's kind of like these wonderful uh, greenery, trees, bushes, these massive roots that kind of go along here, and a plethora of beasties all over the all over the shop. Um, they're going to be um, either attacking you or you attacking them, ideally. Yes, but obviously the biggest difference um, between the what of the original Xenoblade and um, this new world is uh, that every location we're on is actually a big mm. living titan. So you can see the head of uh, Gormot up there. So if you remember from Santa Bay Chronicles, um, there were two main titans really. There was the Bionis and the Mechonis, and that was your overall world. Mm. Um, and they, there was kind of like multiple stuff within that. And it's kind of trying that, that idea again, but again having more of them. So there's a huge variety of these different titans which all have their own style, their own world, their own countries, peoples, cultures, wildlife, weather. And obviously they are living in and of themselves. Yes. So whereas the Bionis and the Mechonis in Xenoblade Chronicles were static, mm. and it was how life had grown on them, you were living in conjunction with the Titans yeah. in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. But let's go check out one of those. Yeah. One of those people. So if you see just behind the trees there, well, there's Territorial Rothbart again. He's getting a little bit tricky. <laughs> He's huge, he is, first of all. He's he is massive. massive. He's, uh, everyone's level 6. He's level 81. Um, he will smash you for about 7,000 damage. So I wouldn't bother. So as we enter Torrigoth, um, which is inhabited by the Welsh. There's Welsh accents all over there. And it's lovely. The Gormotti are um, a Welsh kind of uh, you know, country. And you can hear in the music that kind of very... Um, a Gaelic kind of Celtic vibe mm -hmm. that kind of comes from you know the Isle, the British Isles, um, and yeah, I think this is one of the most like incredible um, like town things. I can't stop listening to it, um, and you can see it's lively, it's bustling. Yeah, um, and obviously like another thing about it being lively and bustling, I will just quickly point out, and um, there's plenty to do. All these blue question marks are all optional side quests uh, that I've not picked up and then there's all the shops to check out hmm. but there's genuinely a lot to do and this is only the little town square so yeah. Rockgoth is actually much larger than yeah. this yeah this is like the one third of it pretty much you've got like yeah. this kind of one side you've got a central point and then a further um, side, side to it as well um, and this is kind of a good time to really bring up you'll see these sections with like stars on it 
um, and obviously there's like all, all these shops. Um, you know, true to Xenoblade Chronicles fashion, uh, the more time you spend, the more uh, side quests you do, the more money you spend in the areas, you kind of build up and develop the areas. You know, their economy gets stronger, their ability to trade with other, other countries gets better, and more unlocks, more side quests, more characters, mm -hmm. and, you know, more kind of stuff to buy. Um, so again, that progression system of really, really developing your areas is back. It, yeah, it continues that lineage from both Xenoblade Chronicles and Xenoblade Chronicles X. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, I'm not, I'm not after doing any crazy missions today. Uh, there is actually, um, I want to go out, I want to go out and hunt. Um, oh yeah, yeah, by all means, by all means. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah. I just want to see his face. <laughs> yeah, I know, that moment of just... Like, oh, there yeah. he is. A oh, high pirate. Hello, uh, pirate. Oh, uh, yeah. that's not who I'm here to Territorial fight. rock bar. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not after fighting territorial rock bar. Let's not deal with him. He looks a bit, a bit bad. Yeah, maybe. Ancient souls. Maybe not. Level 92. I, I reckon you got a chance. <laughs> I don't know. There, must, there, there definitely must be a unique monster we can fight around here. Spring X? Is it? No, that's not. Too easy. Too easy. Okay, well, what about this this guy? Yeah, this guy sure. The rock? He looks pretty proud. Uh, you know, yeah. this kind of Lion King vibe going on. And the the some lovely birds going <laughs> on behind him. That, that, is a, that is a beautiful picture. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, who, 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 that's uh, joyous, joyous and happiness. Joyous, everywhere. happy, it's gorgeous. Um, mm. Yeah, I think this guy could set us a nice challenge. He's only level 12, but as you can see, because he's got that sort of black um, signia. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it, it denotes that he is one of the unique monsters. He, so he is a unique tell. monster. Also, the uh, pedigree. Um, <laughs> so amazing, isn't it? <laughs> it? It is. Okay, yeah, this, we're going to go up to this unique monster. Yeah, let's okay. do it. Let's, let's, let's target him and see what his... Sad. <laughs> Sad Bernard. Sad Bernard. I thought he looked pretty happy. What, what's wrong, mate? I mean, he's not got many friends around. Have you thinned the pack out? I might have. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> fair enough. Well, we are a bit higher leveled than Bernard, so maybe that's why he's sad. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, we're level 28. I want to be 28. Let's, let's see what Sad Bernard can Okay. So this is kind of like we're going to really look at, at the battle system in a slightly... We're going to go over, over the basics. So on the bottom right-hand side, you've got your um, HUD, the UI. And those four plates kind of denote the four buttons. So the X button is anchor shot, Y is sword bash, and B is double spinning edge. Um, and obviously, uh, in, in, in line with you know um, previous Xenoblade Chronicles titles, um, you know you have positional attacks. Sword bash, as you see with a little ex explanation, if you attack from the back, as James just did there, um, you do more damage. And that's also shown by the little um, like the little star icon that kind of spins around the outside of the number. And there, uh, the double spinning edge being from the side. He's so getting a bit angry now. So unique monsters can go into like a rage mode type thing. Uh, hey, it hasn't happened yet. We'll see if Bernard does, does go into it. Um, but different enemies will, will, will do this. It means you need to kind of like really go after them quickly before they output some serious damage. Um, so yeah, the positioning again is one of those really important things. One thing that has kind of changed from Xenoblade Bay Chronicles is, and um, also from Xenoblade Bay Chronicles X is that when you're moving, your auto attack kind of gets reset when you move. So um, you don't want to, if you want to attack, you have to stand still. You have, have to choose your position and commit to it. Right, but obviously by, so I'm auto attacking and positioning myself, I'm using blade arts. But I can now use the uh, A button to do a specific attack, mm. which builds up over time. Yeah, so I was going to say, currently you're saying stones. That means that you've yeah. currently got the level 1 blade uh, combo from Tora. But it means, I can see that it, it, so you've got fire on, on the top there. So by utilising the fire level 2, it then puts you into the next stage of the blade combo. Now, we've only got either wind or earth left. Um, you can kind of tell what level you're at. So if you look at Tor um, Tora's picture, Mega Eruption, it's got one circle currently spinning around, which means he's at level one. Yeah. In order to use um, the, the, uh, the, the Earth element and have the effect of Seal Shackle Driver, we'll explain that at some and point. And deals some serious some damage. Serious damage. He, Tora needs to get three of those, those little um, balls going around. Oh, Sad Bernard tried to call his friends, but no one arrived. Maybe that's why he's saying. <laughs> Maybe. Like, Come help me, friends! <laughs> Maybe that is why he's sad. Are you injured? Or sad, that is. <laughs> you get a nice little bit, bit of fanfare there as well when you win. What's kind of nice as well about um, a kind of change to the unique monsters here as well is that um, when they're defeated, they are gone from the map, so you know that they're gone. And you have fought them once, but a tombstone does appear. 
a name to tune. So if you do want to fight um, Sad Bernard again, if you want to bring him back from the dead, and then, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, just really hammer home that sadness. Um, you can speak to the named tombstone, uh, or check it rather, and then your unique monster yep. come back. And um, so obviously previously they would just come back, so you don't actually know whether you, you defeated them or not. Um, but this is a kind of visual re- re- reminder yeah. that... Much easier. One. So when I do uh, beat the territorial uh, chap and also the... Um, Rotbart, I believe the name is Rotbart. Yeah. So when I do eventually beat territorial Rotbart, I can uh, get his tombstone there, yeah. take a little capture... <laughs> And be like, hey, hey. on Twitter. <laughs> um, but yeah, but it, it is great. Uh, I know that that fight did actually get cut a little short. Um, obviously, we were explaining a lot. Hmm. Um, so maybe we should go find a harder fight. I think so. Yes. I mean, because he was only level 12, hence his sadness. So let, yeah. let, 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 let's have a look at something a bit more uh, difficult. Uh, a bit more an extended, extended fight, and we'll really look yeah. into the details of how it goes. Yeah, and let's, uh, let's, let's leave Gormot and check out what Okay, so... We've had a look at our first area in yep. Gormot. Let's go to our second, second area. Second. Let's go to Araya. 